And we're ready whenever you are, Mayor. Good evening, and thank you for attending tonight's City Council meeting. For those who are attending remotely, the camera in the council chamber is set up to show those attending in person tonight. The platform we are using has a raise hand feature. You will notice a picture of a hand in the corner. When we reach the point in the meeting where the public has the opportunity to address council, you can click that button and be given your opportunity to address council. Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. Kathy, would you please call the roll? Mayor Scully. Here. Councilor Dillaba. Here. Councilor Fisher. Here. Councilor Kennedy. Here. Councilor Powers. Councilor Reesh. Here. Councilor Scamperly. Here. Quorum present. Councilor uh, Powers did send an email. Oh, sorry. No, go ahead. I didn't well, know. Well, Councilor Powers there. asked to be excused because of uh, work commitment. Is it a consensus council to excuse Council Powers? Yes. 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 Presentation. We have one presentation tonight regarding sales tax update that will be made by City Comptroller Angela Gray. Good evening, Mayor and Council. <clears throat> Excuse me, included in your packet is a 12 month cash basis collection report of sales tax. Just in summary, um, this does reflect January to December 2022, all that was deposited into the bank for sales tax. We had a monthly target of $250,000 per month to accumulate by the end of the year of $3 million. We have collected $2,934,000, very close to that $3 million mark. Um, from our sharing agreement, which are your light blue bars in January through April, that represents approximately $1.1 million of the total. <clears throat> the amount that we have collected um, as a preempted government is 1,795,000. So if we break that down per month, our average monthly collection as a preempted entity on sales tax is roughly $200,000 per month. Um, that's based on nine months of data. We still have three months of 2022 collections that will come into the city in the next three months give or take, um, but if that trend does continue, then we would be on pace to only collect 2.4 of the $2.7 million budgeted in 2023. 2.7 or 2.6? I'm sorry, you are corrected. We, I am corrected. Uh, we did end up with a final budget of 2.6 million. Right. And uh, if I'm not mistaken, that July number is because we had payback or we were overpaid perhaps, something along those Yes, lines. that is correct. So the state goes through, they do an estimate, they do an estimate, and then in that third month, they do a true up. So we will see that same circumstance and know what that true up becomes of January to be known in February. Okay. Okay, thank you very much. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you. We have one public hearing tonight. It is regarding an application for up to $2 million. The round seven, Restore New York Community Initiative through the Empire State Development Corporation for the demolition and redevelopment of eight parcels uh, collectively composing the former St. Lawrence Food Cheese Manufacturing Plant. It is bill number 44, and I will open that to public hearing now. If anyone attending in person would like to speak, come down to the podium and you'll have five minutes. This is for the Neeps Restore New York grant. Is there anyone attending remotely? I do not see any hands raised. I'll declare this public hearing closed. 
At this time, anyone in attendance would like to address council, please come down to the podium and you'll have five minutes. Yes, my name is Kirk Ramsey. I'd like to thank you all for uh, having me here or letting me speak. Members of the council, thank you for allowing me to address you this evening. I came here to discuss a resolution that has been placed on tonight's agenda by Mayor Skelly to censor Councilor Reich for his statements toward a city staff member accusing him of making demeaning and disrespectful state. The mayor cites administrative regulations 23, which by way, by the way states, it's AR 23A, staff members are reminded to extend to the public all courtesies as defined by the rules of basic human conduct and AR 23B regarding courteous treatment towards and by the public, no matter, no member of the staff is expected to give or receive discourteous treatment. I'd like to take this opportunity to remind the mayor that he is also subject to the same rules that he wants to censor Councilor Reich. Specifically on June 6, 2022, in the evening, while I was dining at a lo local establishment, I was accosted by the mayor, him poking fun at my physical appearance, along with mentioning that I didn't know. The but panel. then that, you know what that was about? It was about you torturing me when I was 11 years old, after my father died, and you, Are and you, and you I don't got even know what you're deserve. talking about. That. You're done. You're done. done. I just have you one know? more statement here. No, no, you're done. Therefore, it is my belief that as anyone to censor this evening, it should be Mayor Skelly. Yeah. It should be added to the list. To save time at this meeting, should anyone be in question as to what I'm talking about, ask Mayor Skelly. Mm -hmm. I'm sure he'll give you his spin as to what happened. Okay. Then ask me, right. I'll tell you the truth. Thank you. Yeah. Is there anyone else would like to speak? Yes, I just looked at a couple questions that were, that, I, that concerned me as a taxpayer that I've read on social media over the weekend. And probably the first one is, uh, there was a statement made by uh, <laughs> Mr. Jelly that we have a new city manager. And that that was due in part to the video that he produced in the conference that the mayor and him attended. Uh, is there any truth to that matter? What's really disappointing is that anything that would be discussed in an executive session would have been spoken to to the previous city manager, and I'll leave it at that. Okay, well, well, but like I said, he's I making a statement. He doesn't even work here. We, we he doesn't even a... live here, okay? And the taxpayers should should know what's going on, all right? We, we had another candidate that Ron Langley and some others attacked on the town hall, and he uh, removed himself. And that was that was all an executive session. All an ex anyone know where that came from? I because, do not. Because there were three people that opposed them. So, and, but, all right. Uh, but it, it, do we have a new city manager? I am voted one, so I say no. Okay. We do not. You do not. <clears throat> there has well, not been a city manager that's been voted for in the okay. public. Thank you for that. Uh, maybe somebody had to contact Mr. Jelly. And, and tell him that uh, what he put on social media is is, is not true. I don't think um, I don't think I saw anything from Steve. Look up John Lovely's post and that and on the town hall that John he got Lovely or Steve that he got from Mr. Jelly. John Lovely or Steve? He got that from Mr. Jelly. Mr. Jelly is quoted in that. Well, I'm certain that a new manager, 
possible manager candidate could uh, contact the old manager to get some some fill-ins. That would make sense. <laughs> but his comment was there that we hired a new city manager, and that was because of the twenty-four thousand dollars we spent on the video. Okay, that's his exact words in that comment. Uh, just moving on, just quickly, uh, Councilor Reich and, and Councilor Fisher at the last meeting brought up the redevelopment plan, and uh, they said it's been, you know, was uh, put here what 18 months ago. Well, the previous city manager left in December. Okay, the interim city manager has been here for what two months. The guy that you paid fifty thousand dollars to, okay, that was his responsibility. And more than once he sat right in this chair, John, and he told you one night that it wasn't a priority of his. And if you're going to get on anybody's case, it's the guy that left there. That was his problem. Okay, he didn't do his job in that situation. That should have been done. And my last, my last comment is uh, there's a lot of rumors going around this community. And... Uh, that uh, the city attorney is representing our mayor in a private lawsuit. As a taxpayer, I'd like to know if that's true. Do I have to foil that? Or any, any questions or any comments on that? I haven't heard that yet. You haven't heard that yet? But I'm not, I don't follow a lot of social okay. media. Okay, I'm, I'm gonna sure ask you once more. Okay, is the city attorney representing the mayor in a private lawsuit? Oh, yeah. I don't. No I don't have an answer. Okay. I don't know. All right, I will put that on what I have received. Okay, it'll be in the paper. And there's a, there, there is a, there is a letter stating that the city attorney is representing Mr. Skelly. Is there anyone else? Anyone remotely attending? The first individual is registered as Margaret Haggerty, and I will unmute that individual now. It appears you are self-muted. Ms. Haggerty, it appears you are self-muted. Anyone else? I do not see any other hands raised. Okay. And this brings us to. Oh, Hello. How are we doing? I uh, just wanted to bring the point to you tonight. I was kind of disappointed after uh, hearing Mr. LaRoe speak last meeting. Uh, he said he reached out to try to help with the budget, um, said he didn't want to hinder things, I believe. Why would we not uh, accept help from somebody um, of his stature? I believe the company he runs employs more people than the city or real close to it, I would assume. You know, it's, it's unfortunate. I would consider this individual, a, you know, respectable person and a successful person. And the fact that someone's, you know, offering their expertise for free to try to help uh, to not partake in that. I mean, shame on you, honestly. And if some of you probably didn't even know he reached out, I don't know who knows and who didn't. <clears throat> All the stuff about censor censoring uh, Mr. Reese here, this this is hilarious, Mike. It's it's a joke. It really is. Okay, your whole your whole leadership here has been a joke, and. There was a lot of times, I'm sure, where people would have wanted you censored. There's a lot of times when we wish you would just speak in your microphone. So when people watch the videos who aren't sitting in this room, they can hear what you purposely do that. When you want it to be heard, you speak up. And when you don't, you kind of sit back and talk quietly into your microphone, which is, it's corrupt, sir. I think I would say enough. You're a leader. And that, that's enough. Now, uh, if I worked at You're JMS done. Mechanicals You're and done. I did something yeah, wrong, no, no, no. somebody would point that out to me. If I put some plumbing in and the pipes broke or something the next day and it leaked water in their house, 
if I was your employee, you would want to, to talk to me about it or at least address the situation. When city employees need to be addressed or anyone needs to be addressed, anyone at this table should be allowed to ask them any question they want. You said what Mr. Reese did was, I forget the exact words, but the words you use is just crazy. He asked basic questions that not only the council, but the city wants to know the answers to, okay? I'll be the person, I mean, the city knows I'm not scared to speak my mind. The reason the audit wasn't done, the independent audit, is because you and Steve didn't want it done. That's why there's different answers being given. That's why there's different answers being given as to why it wasn't done, okay? I don't even know what you're talking I do know what I'm talking no, about. Are you going to say that in the microphone so it comes over the, the YouTube video that you I don't know, know what I'm what talking about? Because I'm pretty sure I do. So. Well, then what happened? Because to say that it's from a, a family sickness or something, something of that magnitude, that's not an acceptable excuse for something like that. You know, it's just not. And then people are saying that the city didn't provide proper uh, information was the reason why it wasn't done. And we get these different answers. The people deserve to know that that audit's really important and uh the budget unfortunately had to be passed without it um it is what it is you know and you could sit there and say i'm full of crap or i don't know what i'm talking about but i watch these meetings i participate in my government it's unfortunate this room seats less than one percent of the city and it's usually pretty empty so i at least give myself some credit for trying to participate in my local government and uh you know, you wanted to censor me. So what you did was you had the, the police call me and say that I was going to be arrested for coming to city council or city hall that or city court because they're in this business. True. That is true. That did happen. That Chief true. Kearns is right behind me and he's and talked to me and Lieutenant Maxner. Yes. And then I called a lawyer named uh, Mr. Dumas, I believe. No, that's your lawyer. Excuse me, I talked to a lot of lawyers, so let me think of the guy's name, because he made some courtesy calls on my behalf, time and you guys let me back in City Hall afterwards. Is this so you're corrupt, and you don't like what I'm talking about, but you had the police expel me from this building for two weeks because you wanted to censor me. That is not true. For someone who's Republican, you act an awful lot like the Democratic Party, federally. You don't like letting people talk, yeah. especially when it's not in your favor. Okay, pal? So I'll be done with that, and... uh. Like I said, I wish in the future, if somebody with uh, some good credentials tries to help you with a budget in a serious situation like we were in, you should take it. That'd be, that'd be a good idea, I think. Thank you. Is there anyone else like to speak? Anyone remotely? We're all done. The individual registered as Margaret Haggerty still has her hand waved. I'm going to try to unmute her one more time. Miss Haggerty, it appears you are self-muted. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you now. Okay, I'm sorry about a few minutes ago. Um, first of all, shout out to all the neighbors helping neighbors when we've had these big snows in the last few weeks. Um, greatly appreciated by me um, with regard to my neighbors, but I know that it's happened around the city, so uh, shout out to all those good folks. The second thing I have to say could be very long, but it boils down to the the lack of trust that the city has in the city council is getting worse and worse, or greater and greater, more and more lack of trust. That you guys will sit there and have these discussions Say you're not talking about things, say that things that things aren't happening, but then we learn that they are. Your trust is the trust that we have, and I, well, I'll speak for myself, is less than ever. And as far as the um, previous uh, speaker, I, I hope that a lot of people are online and listening to the meeting, and I totally encourage people to go back randomly and look at any uh, city council meeting YouTube. You'll see what I mean and you'll see how it's getting worse. Thanks for taking my call. Uh, and this brings us to correspondence. Do we have any correspondence? We do not. Next we have our consent agenda. 
that the names and claims as enumerated in general fund warrant 2023 in the amount of $908,457.01 and library warrant number 2-2023 in the amount of $0 and capital fund warrant number 2-2023 in the amount of $870,413.72 and community development warrant number 2-2023 in the amount of $45 and community renewal fund warrant number 2-2023 in the amount of $0 as audited be and the same hereby are ordered paid. I so move. I'll second. Kathy, would you please call the roll? Mayor Scully? Yes. Councilor Jillaba? Yes. Councilor Fisher? Yes. Councilor Kennedy? Yes. Councilor Reesh? Yes. Councilor Scamperly? Yes. Approved. We do not have any appointments tonight, so that brings us to items for council action. Our first item of business will be read by Interim City Manager and Director of Planning and Development, Andrea Smith. Is that right? the city manager to submit an application for up to two million dollars through the restore seven restore seven communities initiative through empire state development corporation for the demolition and redevelopment of eight parcels collectively composing the former st lawrence foods cheese manufacturing plant i'll move that one second uh kathy would you please call the roll councillor dillaba yes Councillor Fisher? Yes. Councillor Kennedy? Yes. Councillor Reesh? Yes. Councillor Scamperly? Yes. Mayor Skelly? Yes. Approved. And this uh, is yep. just in way of explanation for the public. It's $2 million grant application for uh, what? Demolition and redevelopment of the cheese plant property? Right. Demolition um, and redevelopment, redevelopment in the sense of site restoration infrastructure planning not necessarily redevelopment but yeah not redeveloping one of the buildings or anything like that no uh we don't believe that any of the buildings are salvageable we have had um a couple engineering studies done there's significant deterioration due to leaking roofs fires um and as well as contamination from asbestos both friable and non friable and transite panels. So the buildings have sustained substantial damage over the last several years and really at this point are not salvageable. We actually approved money at one time. We had a contract and everything, but we didn't go through with it. And this is this is more, uh, it'll cover hopefully the cost. Right, we have been working with um, Paradigm Environmental, who we've been working with over the last several months on multiple projects related to asbestos in particular. Uh, also, Labella um, has done some engineering studies looking at the tanks uh, and again, the environmental issues. Um, the bid that we did do that you're referring to, Councillor Reesh, um, the contractor admittedly uh, didn't have a full understanding that there were basements in some instances. Uh, and the real scope of the project. So the bid came back grossly under what it really would have cost the city. So the project was put on hold at that time and we've done some additional work kind of designing a more uh, detailed demolition project. And the bar has been torn down. Is there still a, still tanks under there? Yes. Is this part of that maybe? Well, it would all be included in, in this particular project. It's the entire block. Okay, thanks. This will be um, a big boost and, um, and very necessary to redevelopment of the Marina District. And hopefully it can um, be accomplished soon so it doesn't hinder uh, the new brewery that uh, Billy Hosmer is planning on building down there and, and the hotel development. So, yes, uh, so hopefully you have good luck with this one. Thank you. Kathy, would you please call the roll? Mayor, we did. Oh, we did. Oh, we did. Okay. Our next item of business will be read by Public Works uh, Director Shane Brown. 
a resolution allowing the St. Lawrence County Department of Highways to be held harmless for providing shared services such as signage, road striping, blasting, and other routine maintenance activities to the city of Augensburg. Um, um, Kathy, would you please call the roll? Councillor Fisher? Yes. Councillor Kennedy? Yes. Councillor Reesh? Yes. Councillor Scamperly? Yes. Mayor Skelly? Yes. Councillor Dillaba? Yes. Approved. Our next item of business will be read by Interim City Manager, Andrea Smith. This is a resolution authorizing the city manager to enter into a contract with Titan Roofing Inc. with for bid number 2022-008. I'll move that. Second it. Kathy, would you please call the roll? Councillor Kennedy? Yes. Councillor Reesh? No, I, I, I think that we shouldn't go out for grants before we go out to bid. I think the council ought to know that we're going out to bid ahead of time. And I, I, I'm i going to vote no. Councillor Scamperly? Yes. Mayor Scally? Yes. Councillor Dillabaugh? No. Councillor Fisher? No. Denied. Our next item of business will be read by Police Chief Mark Kearns. Resolution authorizing the city manager to enter into a contract with NCC Systems. Whereas the city of Augensburg solicited quotes to install a security system at the Augensburg Police Department. And whereas NCC Systems has proven their capacity and ability to perform the work to the city's satisfaction. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the interim city manager or her designee is authorized to enter into a contract with NCC Systems for a sum not to exceed $6,745.18 for the installation of a security system. The, uh, for the result that the expense for this program would be charged to account code A3120.310. I'll move that. Second it. Do you not have a security system? It's always been. We do not. It's always been open. It's always and been. And you went out and got estimates from other companies? We've asked other companies. NCC has been the only one that's responded, sir. Kathy, would you please call the roll? Councillor Rage? Yes. Councillor Scamperly? Yes. Mayor Scally? Yes. Councillor Dillaba? Yes. Councillor Fisher? Yes. Councillor Kennedy? Yes. Approved. Our next item of business will be read by City Comptroller Angela Gray. We actually don't need to do this resolution. Um, okay. I was going to tell you we don't need to do it because the bond council spent some specific language, but um, okay. since the roof wasn't approved, we don't need to do this at this time. Okay. So I think the, okay, I see that you want to base it on a grant rather than the bond. Okay. Our next item of business will be read by Fire Chief Ken Stahl. A resolution authorizing to enter into a contract with MJ Bourbon, whereas the city of Augensburg is desirous of submitting grants in support of the fire service, including but not limited to the FEMA assistance to firefighters grant and staffing for adequate fire and emergency response. And whereas MJ Bourbon Inc. has successfully guided companies through the process of obtaining government contracts, grants, and loans at the federal, state, and local levels. And whereas Julie Berlini, is the Chief Executive Officer of MJ Bourbon Inc. Julie has over 25 years of experience securing funds for our nation's first responders, hospital systems, municipal infrastructure, school districts, and corporate entities. Now therefore be it resolved that the interim city manager is authorized to enter into a contract for professional services with MJ Bourbon Inc. in accordance with the terms and agreement attached hereto for a sum not to exceed $10,000. Be it further resolved that expense for the service will be charged to A265. I'll move that. I'll second it. 
Another question. Did, has she seen our last two applicants tonight that she has? Seen? She's pretty confident she can. Uh, she has found um, deficiencies in um, the last two years' worth of grants that we have submitted. Okay. And I just read where it says um, that she'll communicate with one client representative. Who is that representative for the city yourself? She would prefer it was me because if there's any questions about the fire related. No, I think that's or, great. I just wanted to make sure. Um, so, no. okay. um, Andrew and I have been in contact with her for the last uh -huh. month or so. so. I don't think it has to be exclusive, but that's what she did. Okay, I was just curious. Mike, um, is uh, this something that can't be done in-house, that our, our staff can't write this grant? Well, uh, can I respond to that, Mayor? Oh, yes. Please. So we can and we have uh, prepared safer grants, AFG grants in the past. However, we have been successful in obtaining them. Um, the chief can speak directly to the assistance we got last year, um, but I, I am fully supportive of this because I do think that if the city is serious about seeking federal funds, we have really gone above and beyond to get some technical assistance to, to staff um to prepare the grants in-house and we haven't been successful so this particular method of doing it is is a different method um this particular grant writer has been successful in the most recent safer round of safer grants she procured awards for multiple communities in new york state um and so i think that it will greatly increase our chances of obtaining funds she'll kind of come at it with a different perspective and a different level of expertise that we simply don't have in-house. So you are welcome to add anything else. So so if I can, it's not just for those two um, FEMA grants. She'll write any grant that the fire department is eligible for, whether it be at the state level, whether it be at Lowe's, Walmart. Um, she will take care of all grant writing. Um, she was successful. Um, only, as, only two um, municipalities last year received SAFER awards. Um, one was Saratoga Springs, which received a safer for 16 firefighters. She was the successful grant writer for that. Well, I just it, it just seems also like with grant writing as far as the $10,000, like I'm, I'm going to use an example that the, even the CDBG grants, as Council Reese talks about a lot, um, Dank will write those for us for $5,500. Bucks. Um, I, I just, I just think it's, I think that staff should be able to write this. So, just so for the last, the last two years, we we uh, we wrote them. Uh, two years ago, the um, former city manager wrote the grant. Um, he was unsuccessful last year. Don McCarthy, who was a um, former assistant fire chief, wrote the grant with the assistance of the New York State um, Firefighters Union, which uh, former city manager allowed their, their grant writing um, expertise helped, and we still did not get it. So in my opinion, to quote Einstein, to do the same thing and expect a different outcome doesn't make any sense to me. But well, that, that's, 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 that's your opinion and it's mine. So I, I, I respect yours, don't, you know, I don't need Einstein. An awful lot of the decision, as I understand it, is based on the financial health of the community. And last year we had pretty close to a six million dollar fund balance and you have to show those things. So that may that may have been why it was denied, not the quality of the grant writing. I, I think it should be done in house too. And my my other concern is that, you know, I, I mean I'm I'm not supporting hiring eight firefighters to go to a six man shift. That's just I mean we're already talking about a budget and and how tight the budget is. So I don't think this ten thousand is budgeted for. And I, if I'm if I'm not mistaken, um, the Board of Appeals and the whole issue with uh, the lawsuits or whatever you want to call them and the arbitration were all based on a five man shift. Um, I don't know if I can speak to that. It was sure. It was based on a five man minimum, not a five man shift. Okay. Five man minimum. Five man minimum. All right. So that's what we're obligated to. So why would we, why would in this environment be proposing to hire eight? So, so you're talking about the resolution that's two more away. 
Um, I'm not yeah. asking to hire eight. That's just to get approval to submit for eight. You don't have to accept the grant if we're successful. Then it, then it needs to say whatever we're proposing to do and it says eight right now. It says up it to says eight. Up to eight. Right. So you're applying for funding for up to eight. This this so this grant hasn't even opened yeah. yet. This was I, just to I get the, to get if uh if we were successful in obtaining um Julie, she wanted approval so that she could start working on it so that when the grant opened, she could submit it right at the beginning. I, I just think it ought to be written in house. I'm fully supportive of the hundred and ten thousand for the emergency generator, those maintenance equipment and you know, I mean, maybe I could take a look at a lower number that I can't support. Eight. So when we get to that one, that is just a proposal. As I stated during my budget session, and I still believe it is cheaper to hire right now than to pay the overtime. So I'm not even sure that I would say eight would be the number. I think we should have four hired this year to save the money. I laid it out there. It's, it's facts. I believe you received the update on the money I could have saved last month by hiring. Um, I'm not asking you to like the fire department contractor to like me. I'm asking you to do what's financially in the best interest to run the fire department. I like you. I like the fire department. Thanks, John. Uh, you know, so, so that's not the issue. I mean, you know, I don't want to get into a big debate or argument, but right now we're paying hazard pay for the six man. And, and like I said, both those suits are based on a five man minimum. So why are we paying half a thousand dollars the union could save us? Well, respectfully, I, so well, I, so wait, I'm not done yet. And then, you know, you can mutually agree and it's not you. I mean, you're the chief, you're supposed to be the manager and representing management. And I realize you have a tough job and you got to have the men respect you and stand up and everything. But, you know, they could mutually agree to a four man shift and save the community $50,000. I know that's not what the contract says, but I didn't I didn't adopt the contract. So I, I, I struggle with what you're trying to present as savings and what the reality is for the community and the people of Ardensburg and the savings that could be realized on the other side. And I, I'm happy to sit down and talk about it with anybody, but I can't negotiate. negotiate. And I, I don't think they would, as I understand it, offers have been made on the settlement which is anywhere from 140,000 to half a million dollars. And the union hasn't even responded to it. So I struggle with all this stuff that, you know, we ought to be working together for everybody's money where we can on both sides. I'm, I'm done, oh. I'm sorry, go ahead. Uh, Steve, you're a lot, of background, a lot of background noise. I was just going to say, um, valid points, uh, Councillor, but the resolution at hand really is a separate resolution about grant writing specifically. It is staff's recommendation to pursue this. And with regard to your statement about was this budgeted for, the short answer is it wasn't budgeted for. We didn't after the budget was approved. However, the line items that were noted and on your cover page, you'll see um, that there is $12,500 uh, $12, in the sale of equipment. This is specifically with regard to the pumper truck. So on that, um, and, I, and I apologize because I didn't even brief um, Andrea. On my way here, I took a cell phone call. I believe tomorrow I will have a fair offer on the Quint. Um, which will exceed the twelve thousand five hundred dollars that is actually on that line item. So that is where we had proposed to cover this expense. Well, I ended, okay. So just, just I just but, wanted to clarify but that. But that that savings was savings, and and now we're spending it. It's no longer savings. In hopes of getting more savings through a professional grant writer. So it's whether or not you want to take a chance on it. I guess. I. So from staff's perspective, this is a, this is, you know, doing the cost benefit analysis. It isn't free to prepare grants in house. You are using your staff that are a salaried position, uh, but it does take that them time away from doing something else, writing another grant, doing other aspects of their, of their duties. So I do 
again, just for the benefit of the council and the public, I do believe that this is in the city's financial interest as well as long-term success um, to support this resolution. So. I, I'd like to see a cost benefit analysis on eight firefighters over 20 years. I mean, that, 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 that would be whether or not there's a cost savings or not with all the increases in the, in the contract and uh, they're hired for 20 years. All the increases in healthcare, all the increases in pension, um, all those additional costs and project it over 20 years and find out if it saves us money or not. I'd like to see that before I vote on anything. I think the fact is that uh, we can't afford it. So even if it saves us money, there's, we're going to run out of money either, either way. So we just can't afford it. You know, every department's gone down and and um, the fire department can't maintain, be maintained at uh, 20. We need to have volunteers and, um, and try to stabilize and maintain all of our departments, our police department, our DPW, our city hall staff and fire department. That that's that's what we're facing. So you should know tomorrow on the sale of the quint the approximate value. Correct. Um, I just have to tomorrow at staff meeting. I plan on um, speaking with Andrea about it to see what her thoughts were on it. It's currently on a um, drafted with a um, a un, uh, auction company, um, so we would have to lower the price um, on their website. Um, slightly, but I do believe it's it's a fair offer. Um, there's a few things that they are requesting to make the sale go through, um, but I had intended to discuss that with the interim city manager tomorrow. Okay, so there could be some surplus funds. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Kathy, would you please call the roll? It is. I lost my place. Sorry. <laughs> Councillor Scamperly. Yes. Mayor Scowley? No. Councillor Dillabaugh? No. Councillor Fisher? No. Councillor Kennedy? Yes. Councillor Reesh? No. Denied. Our next item of business will be read by Fire Chief Ken Stahl. So before I read this resolution, um, there has, there's an amended version that I believe you all received prior to the meeting, and that would have to be voted on um, before I can read the amended version. Um, an amended version? It was in your packet right, right in front of this resolution. Perhaps it stuck to the resolution you may have just flipped over. Mm -hmm. Well, the one we have in our packets, the amended one, the one that was on our desk? Yeah. Okay. yeah. It, it changes the third and fourth, whereas we gave you a track changes version so you can see the change. Mm -hmm. This was suggested from, from Julie, which the chief will discuss. If you'd like to pass this to Councilor Reese, that's an extra phone. <laughs> So I believe the council has to vote to accept the amended version before I can read it. Actually, Chief, we would need a motion. You're right, but we need a motion to amend in a second. So I'll motion to amend the, uh, the resolution to the new amended resolution. I'll second that. Discussion? To, to amend. Touched on that. Okay, Mayor Scali? Yes. Councillor Dillaba? No. Councillor Fisher? What's the what was the amendment? I don't have it. What was what was the change? All it is is just to amend it. He's gonna read it and then we would vote on it. We're just making sure we got everybody agrees we're talking about the same thing. This is the what the uh, generator? Yeah. Sure. That's a yes, sir. Yes. Councillor Kennedy. Yes. Councillor Rage. Yes. Councillor Scamperly. Yes. Approved. 
a resolution to authorize the submission of fiscal year 2022 assistance to firefighter grant application, whereas the fiscal year assistance to firefighter grant program is one of three grant programs that constitute the Department of Homeland Security Federal Emergency Management Agency's focus on enhancing the safety of the public and firefighters with respect to fire and fire related hazards. And whereas the AFG program provides financial assistance directly to eligible fire departments, non affiliated emergency medical service organizations, and state training academies for critical training and equipment. And whereas for jurisdictions serving 20,000 residents or fewer, the applicant shall agree to make available non federal funds in the amount equal to not less than 5% of the grant awarded. And whereas the AFG will request request funding up to $100,000 in accordance with the guidelines issued by FEMA. And whereas if awarded the 5% matching funds, which would be $5,000, would be paid out of A3410.440 and A3410.450. Now therefore be it resolved that the Augensburg City Council authorizes interim city manager to submit a FY 2022 AFG application and be it further resolved that if awarded the in or their designee is authorized to enter into any necessary contracts to accept and administer this grant expeditiously. What was the change? Was, that? was it just I'll, I'll second it. What was the number? What was the change? So the change was um, this weekend. I uh, actually yesterday afternoon I, I spoke with um, um, Julie Berlini from AG, MJ Bourbon, uh, Bourbon Inc. She um, suggested she had spoken to her, her FEMA advisors and what I had originally put in for, um, she thought was a low percentage of being successful with. So I had a meeting scheduled with her for tomorrow afternoon to go over all of our equipment needs um, along with um, service dates of them. Um, and she would, she, it was her suggestion to put in something that had a better chance of being successful with. So we've moved it from 110,000 to 100,000. That is correct. Her other her other train of thought on that was, um, if I may, um, you don't want to ask for too much in the AFG if you're looking to get the safer. It's 100 or 100. She's doing too bad we didn't hire her. She does. <clears throat> Originally was 110, and then she requested 100,000 with a match going from 100 to 5,000. I have the old one here, I guess. It doesn't matter, but that's fine. I understand it. Did you pass that one down to you, Councilor Rich? Summarize, Avia. No, that's all right. I, I'm fine. fine. Uh, you want to read that? So, no. Mayor, it would be a roll call as amended if mm -hmm. Council's ready. Okay, please uh, call the roll as amended. As amended. Councillor Dillaval? No. Councillor Fisher? Yes. Councillor Kennedy? Yes. Councillor Reich? Yes. Councillor Scamperly? Yes. Mayor Scully? Yes. Approved. Our next item of business will be read by Fire Chief Ken Stahl. A resolution to authorize the submission of fiscal year 2023 FEMA staffing for adequate fire and emergency response grant grant application. Whereas, I'll second that. Kathy, would you please call the roll? Oh, oh, Steve, you have a lot of background noise. I was off. Councillor Fisher? No. Councillor Kennedy? Yes. Councillor Reich? As previously stated, and I supported this last year for four, and uh, I wasn't aware of some of the things that I'm aware of now when there's been a ruling by the arbitrator and those numbers are still in flux which curious to see how that gets resolved I, I i can't support it the way it is um if if the union wanted to sit down and 
negotiate some things, I take a serious look at, you know, form an application for four, but you got to have some cooperation. So your vote is no, sir? Yes, no, that's right. Councillor Scamperly? Yes. Mayor Scully? No. Councillor Dillabo? No. Denied. Our next item of business will be read by Interim City Manager Andrea Smith. So resolution authorizing the interim city manager to enter into an agreement with National Grid. Whereas National Grid has an outdoor lighting LED conversion program designed to convert HID roadway and decorative lumineers. And whereas as a streetlight customer, National Grid has, the oppor has an opportunity to enhance the lighting quality and achieve energy cost savings through a through a proactive conversion of your existing outdoor lighting luminaries to efficient to energy efficient LED luminaries. And whereas the upfront cost to the city to facilitate the LED conversion is $12,267.48 based on the city's residual net book value. And whereas the estimated energy efficiency incentive for the city is $54,660. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the interim city manager is authorized to accept the proposal from National Grid to enter into an agreement with National Grid Outdoor Lighting LED Conversion Program. Be it further resolved that the expenses for this project will be charged to A1670.498 and reimbursed upon receipt of the EE incentive. I'll move that. I'll second that. Been trying to get this done since uh, 2010 or 11. It's nice to see it finally come to I'm, the I'm glad, I, I'm glad I brought it up. If it's uh, <laughs> voted on. Uh, well, been trying, like I said, since 2010. The cost is prohibitive. I remember Kit addressing it many years in a row, and uh, we keep bringing it up. So here it is, finally going to happen. So excellent. Is I that how many street lights we have? Is 985. So my question is, uh, I, I noticed, you know, the offer's good for 180 days and, and they'd like payment soon. How soon after the city submits a payment can we expect full conversion? So that we can hopefully reach the savings ASAP. I think once we sign them, then they, they probably have to go out to a contractor. So we didn't talk into that detail. We just talked about what the cost was and savings. Once we sign the contract, then we'll go back and we'll let us know more, more of that. Okay. Kathy, would you please call the roll? Councillor Kennedy? Yes. Councillor Reesh? Yes. Councillor Scamperly? Yes. Mayor Scully? Yes. Councillor Dillabaugh? Yes. Councillor Fisher? Yes. Approved. All right. This will be read by Interim City Manager, Andrea Smith. A resolution declaring surplus property and authorizing the Interim City Manager to hold a public auction. I'll move that. I'll second that. There's a lot of properties there. So for the benefit of the public, there are 31 properties that are listed uh, and the auction will be 2 p.m. on Thursday, March 2nd. Kathy, would you please call the roll? Councilor Raich? Yes. Councilor Scamperly? Yes. Mayor Scally? Yes. Councilor Dillaba? Yes. Councilor Fisher? Yes. Councilor Kennedy? Yes. Approved. Does that clear the deck? Or is there, is there more out there? No, there are other properties. Um, I mean, <clears throat> there are specifically the property that we acquired at 429 Kaya Street. Um, it, we have some infrastructure issues, so we're working through that before that can be declared surplus. Um, obviously, this doesn't have the diamond property on it. There are some brownfield properties on it. All of the cheese plant properties are not on it, so it's not exhaustive, but this is essentially um, anything that was previously declared surplus and unsold, and then the new properties that the city does not have any kind of interest in that were acquired November 
um, November 21 foreclosure and the June 15th, 2022 foreclosure, which was our last foreclosure. Kathy, would you please call the roll? We already, we already did, did now. Oh, I try to keep all things. Number <clears throat> eleven. Our next item of business will be read by interim city manager Andrea Smith. So, resolution authoring the interim city manager to enter into contracts to complete the rehabilitation of the Main Street pump station. I'll move that. I'll second that. Could you give like, us a summary of the project cost? And yep. Um, so, in total, this is just about $1.4 million in contracts. There would be three contracts. Contract number one is for uh, general construction that would be awarded to AJK Site Development Inc. in an amount not to exceed $1,054,000. Contract number two is for electrical, which would be awarded to Tel Inc. for an amount not to exceed $361,825. Contract number three for heating, ventilation, and plumbing, award to Hydestone Mechanical Contractors Inc. in an amount not to exceed $76,600. Um, to date, the city has received the $1 million NBRC award for this project a $400,000 grant award from St. Lawrence County ARPA funds, as well as $140,000 from uh, a SAM, a state and municipal facilities infrastructure grant, which leaves the city with a 14.4% match, uh, which is the equivalent of $260,000 out of a $1.8 million project. Uh, and initially this was a year or more ago, it was a, uh, a resolution to uh, bond or finance $1.8 million. And I vehemently argued against that. And we did write those grants and uh, good job. And I think the whole thing's, uh, well, it's mostly covered. I, there may be some change orders. Was there a reason why it went from 1.8 to 1.4? That's just the contract uh, sum. So we also do have engineering on this project as well. So the estimate is still, it's it's under 1.8, but that is, that's the project budget is $1.8 million. I think uh, staff deserves a lot of credit. I mean, this is uh, so important um, to our, our west side and uh, it's finally gonna be restored and uh, for a very minimal amount. And, and that's gonna help um, as we move ahead, it's going to help uh, stop some of the um, slow down some of the increases in the uh, sewer fund. So thank you all. Kathy, would you please call the roll? Councilor Scamperly. Yes. Mayor Scully. Yes. Councilor Dillaba. Yes. Councilor Fisher. Yes. Councilor Kennedy. Yes. Councilor Reich. Yes. Approved. I will introduce the next item of business. Whereas city council members are expected to carry out their duties in a respectful manner when conducting public business. And whereas Councilor John Reich has on more than one occasion made demeaning disrespectful statements towards staff members during city council meetings. And whereas the most recent example of such inappropriate conduct by Councilor John Reich took place on January 9th, 2023, when he made a statement implying that interim city manager and director of planning and development, Andrea Smith, failed to perform her duties as expected with respect to a comprehensive development plan previously submitted by John Reich to the former city manager. And whereas statements and conducts of this nature are not in the line rules of basic human conduct as referred to in administrative regulations AR-23, which states staff members themselves are entitled to the same courteous treatment expected by the public. And whereas it should be the goal of all staff 
and elected officials within the city of Ogdensburg to conduct public business in a courteous and respectful manner. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Ogdensburg City Council does hereby censure John for his statement and conduct and, and place him on notice that such conduct shall not be condoned or tolerated during future public meetings or other such official gatherings. Is there a second? I so move. Is there a second? Staff is um, deserves uh, to be. They work hard. They work very hard, and they they work. Nobody to, that knows that better than me, and I, this is just totally false. Uh, okay. And um, um, I'll second this. Okay. I'll second. Okay. Hey. Order. Order. You be removed. Your Honor, I seconded it. Yes. So now we can have discussion. Okay. So, can I have can I have the floor? Oh yes. Yes. Okay. I hate doing this, but first off, did the city attorney review and sign off this resolution as required by the administrative regs? It's a simple question, people. I do not know. I believe that the city attorney did not review and sign off on any of these particular resolutions, council. Okay, if in the in the charter and then under the administrative regs, every resolution will be reviewed form and for its legality by our city attorney prior to a resolution being given to council. Um, I don't know why we don't follow it, but I'm going to continue. Thank you for your answer. Um, I have reviewed the January 9th city council meeting minutes provided by in, in the uh, video in the minutes provided by the city clerk. Starting at the second whereas council Reese has on more than one occasion, blah, 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 the demeaning and disrespectful statements towards staff members during city council meetings. To make such an accusation without any substantial factual information is wrong and simply an unwarranted personal attack on a fellow counselor. <clears throat> I, for one, have found Councilor Reich to be calm, prepared, well-spoken, and willing to ask the hard questions. Now let's move on to whereas number three. The most recent example of such inappropriate conduct from, from, Mr., from, from Councilor Reich on January 9th when he made a statement and I quote, implying, the word here, implying the city manager, director of planning, Andrea Smith, failed to perform her duties. At no time did Council restate that the interim city manager had failed to perform her duties. Dialogue simply went back and forth between council and staff regarding the community development plan. This resolution is not sufficient on its face to make such outrageous accusations against Council Reach. Not to mention the section of the administrative regs, AR-23, doesn't even fit the unwarranted charge. AR-23 is city staff interactions with the public. It has nothing to do with council, states nothing about council. It's like trying to charge somebody with arson for grand larceny. You can't, if, 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 unfortunately, if anybody should be censured, it should be the author of this resolution for making such personal attacks on another counselor. That's all I, I got mean, to say. Let me say something. I, I, in this order, in December, in December, John Reese uh, said uh, to uh, another staff uh, when they're at the podium uh, that he believed they were lying. And Dan Scamperoy said, I don't believe you're lying. I did not say that. And, and you know it's not a tip for ten on this. This is the resolution that was brought forward. These but accusations you were, were saying, made. No, no, no. You were asked. It doesn't, it doesn't one. even fit the AR twenty three. It's it's just it's an insane resolution to bring up to begin with, and I I don't support it, and I won't vote for it. I I think it's a bad precedent to start, and uh, and the word implying in a resolution is just wrong. 
You either have facts to substantiate the claim on every one of these, and just not just whereas an opinion. And that's 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 just my personal opinion, and I don't need to talk any more about it. Well, last summer, when John Reese came to your ice cream shop. Boy, you, I don't want to hear it. And you I were don't angry. Order. Order. And you stopped. You stopped that community development. And Andrea had nothing to do with it. It was taken away at your wishes to the previous city managers. And and it's set there. And all of a sudden she comes in. She's doing two jobs. And rather than get appreciation, because she's doing a great job. Listen, there's, that's it, Mike, great, that's got nothing to do with your resolution. And, and, it's got and nothing to do with your resolution. Her, like she's done something wrong when... You did, no, that's she, not true. When, and you were disrespectful to Mr. McNamara when he came in. in the 25th. She no. says, I can't bring it up on the 25th. And she tries to explain to you the procedure that it's going through. No, anybody can ask questions sitting up there, Mike. That's it. You can't use... You, <laughs> AR-23 doesn't fit. It doesn't make any sense. It's ridiculous. You, okay. The two of you were setting that woman up when you knew it had been stopped before her and she wasn't allowed to work on it. You're both aware. Well, I, no, I would not tell anyone. I am sorry. Call for the vote, would you, Your Honor? Could you please yeah. call the vote? Yeah, it's really false. So do I have a second? Yes, oh, Council, but, but if right, we're right. going to weigh in okay, on conversation, I've, I've got some things. Is there any? You, you yes, have? I do. Thank you. I don't know if you're going to thank me, but so if we sit back and we want to look at regard that people have had with members of the community, members of staff, and you would like to start a new precedence of how we are going to convey ourselves mm -hmm. to the public and to staff. It should have started tonight when there were individuals speaking at the podium and you disregarded and you talked back and that was done in a very rude fashion. It also says all members of the city should conduct public business in a courteous and respectful manner. You negated tonight what you're putting in this resolution. And second of all, I didn't, was there a formal complaint issued regarding Mr. Reich? No. I don't always One, agree with John's approach. Yeah, I'm talking. Three, three, I am speaking. I don't always agree with John's approach to how he approaches individuals. It's not my job to police John. I think that the way a lot of individuals on this council have been very discourteous to a number of members of council, not just Andrea. So if we are going to then I think every single member sitting up here at some point over their terms has been guilty of the same thing you are you are implying that John did. While I don't always agree with John, and I don't, I will say that I don't agree with this resolution as it's written. I agree. I'd like to make an amendment. I would not. Okay. I'd like, like to throw this resolution out. Well, we just vote it down. Vote it down. So, I agree. Yeah. Well, with a few things. Get rid of it. Uh, number one, I. I agree with you in the sense that John oftentimes comes off a little harsh towards city staff. Uh, I don't think it's worthy of, of public censor. Uh, and I'd like to say that Andrea, I agree with you, Mayor, does, has done an excellent job. Right now she's doing two jobs. And she also does an excellent job at, in a very professional job, at responding to Councilor Reese, ask her questions. We do have a right to ask questions as council. But this is a very bad precedent to start. I agree with Councillor Fisher on that. And uh, we probably all are guilty at times for sometimes the way we speak to staff or have in the past at least. And uh, we try as best we can when we, when we have these things pointed out to us. And so I don't, I don't want to support this resolution. I just think we should all do a little better and leave it at that. So that's why I want to throw it out. Kathy, would you please call the roll? Mayor Scully? Yes. Councillor Delaba? No. Councillor Fisher? No. Councillor Kennedy? No. Councillor Reich? Councillor Scampoli? No. Denied.
And this brings us to old business. Does anyone have any old business? I actually, um, John and I met with the audit committee on Friday. Did you want to touch on a brief high overview just for the public on the audit committee when we can expect anything or did you want me to do it, John? Okay, let me pull up my email really quick. Um, John and I met with members of the um, city staff and the audit um, the auditors on Friday. I just wanted to let everybody know we are hopefully anticipating a preliminary audit the week of 1.30. So hopefully after that we'll have be able to finalize some things and we'll be able to get some information back to you. I thought that the meeting, although I did have to leave early to pick my son up at school, um, was going well. Um, their staff was in City Hall um, gathering the last documents they needed to finish this up. So, you know, I'm really optimistic to see some numbers next week. And I just kind of wanted to let the public know that that's where we are at. And when we have a full meeting with the auditor, um, the audit committee will bring back um, all the information that we can and we will do it as transparently as possible. Excellent. To piggyback on that, can I ask a question? I'll uh, try to answer. Is is there any uh, any discussion on on hopefully trying to do the 2022 audit before we pass budget next year? Has there been any discussion on that or correcting any mistakes that may have happened? I, I didn't wasn't there if there was that part of the conversation spoken, but I think everybody wants to have it done earlier next okay. year. I think that would be a I, good uh, rule of thumb to know that we don't want to repeat um having to pass the budget without the audit completed again technically we should have an audit before we get a, a preliminary budget really i, I, I agree but, I, think. I think it'll be a different auditor i, I, I think we can i don't know if you disclose that yet but it, 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 it has nothing to do with what's going on they just their staff has shrunk and uh, so we might be first angela we might be a little bit behind the eight ball as a result of that. Maybe that's what I read from you today um, because we have to go out and find someone. Yes, but. for the 2022 audit, we will have to do an RFP. That is something that Angela and I have spoken about. Um, we are hoping to kind of get that out in February so that council will have some options presented to them, but that is correct. We won't have the ability to use the same firm uh, going into the 2022 audit. Thank you. And this brings us to new business. Mike Powers, maybe Dan, I don't remember, had, had mentioned about when we brought up the pilot bill that has now been introduced. I, it should have new numbers in the new legislature for the pilot payments on state owned land. Um, made a suggestion that we form a committee to basically try and move it forward, meet with the legislators, maybe make a trip to Albany to meet with, uh, you know, maybe some staff in the governor's office or whatever committee it's in. So I, I'd like to form that. Um, and I was thinking of like myself and Steve is what I was thinking, but it doesn't matter. And, it's up to you guys if you think we need to form one. I think it's a good idea to, to go and push it, uh, and we should definitely get on that soon. So one way or another, have some people go right to Albany. And I don't, I'm not sure of the process when it gets in committee, uh, I, but you, we can go and lobby to specific people that are within that committee to try and get it right pushed through and out of committee, and that's that's step one. So. Yeah. So, I mean, we can make a resolution now or maybe for next meeting. So, Mike is here. Yeah. Just because if you want him on the committee, he should be here to make sure it's something that he can take on. And I think Mike could probably help you make that resolution. So, yeah. Councilor Powers. That's all I got. Uh, items for discussion. I have Anybody two items. Um, the first of which is to bring to council's attention that in accordance with C100, the mayor and city council shall appoint a charter review commission 
um, and the Charter Review Commission shall be appointed no later than December 31st, 2023. That sounds far off, um, but historically, the seated council would do that. Um, they, we would run an ad usually in February is when it's been done in the past. It's been done in March, um, asking for people that are interested to submit their uh, a little application form. Um, there are the committee consists of 12 individuals, two from each election election district, and there has recently been changes to those election districts. Um, so I just wanted to bring this to council's attention and have any discussion so that if it is something you want us to get started on, we can get press releases and get that started, um, or we can hold off on that if that's something you don't wanna start at this time, but I just wanted to make sure that it was on everybody's radar. Thank you. So that, uh... I believe it was changed from doing it every 10 years to doing it every six or seven, if I'm not mistaken. Mm -hmm. That's correct. correct. After the last uh, charter meeting, so was it six years? It yep. is six years. Okay. And that brings us to... Oh, I have oh, one more item, more? sorry. So the other item for discussion is the <coughs> newest federal holiday, which is Juneteenth, uh, June 19th, 2021 marked the 156th anniversary of the last African-American slaves to be freed in Texas. It also marked the date that President Biden established the, the current Juneteenth National Independence Day Act S-475, uh, establishing this as a federal holiday. The city unofficially commemorated and celebrated the emancipation this past June, on Monday, June 20th, when all administrative offices and the Department of Public Works was closed, the city has not officially adopted this as, as a holiday in accordance with any of the employee contracts. So for that matter, um, in an effort to assist employees as they plan and schedule their holidays, uh, I wanted to bring this to council uh, just for your discussion. It, it typically is something that would be handled by the city manager and the unions, uh, but just looking for any feedback from council on this. Several employees asked last year and have already asked this year how it will be handled. I think you had to do it during the contracts. Typically these types of things, which are very unusual, um, we haven't had a new federal holiday established since Martin Luther King Day in 1983, um, would be handled through a memorandum of agreement with the union. I'm fine with that. Yeah, I believe that's the best way to do it. As long as they give something up. <laughs> I'm not necessarily <laughs> asking for council to take action on this. I'm just asking where you are on it. Um, I, again, I mean, I think it's something that the city should make a determination on one way or another for the benefit of staff, again, for, from a scheduling perspective, as well as informing the public whether or not we would be open on that day. So. It, it it is difficult in a sense because we are we are so short staffed and it is a struggle to keep up with the work. Um, what about Columbus, we have to think about it. Columbus Day and Indigenous Peoples Day. It is now referred to as Indigenous Peoples Day, and that is a recognized holiday. And City Hall is closed. Mm -hmm. Oh, so you just, they actually renamed. They just changed it. Yep. Oh, I didn't know they did that. Was that yep. New York State or, or the federal government? Um, that is a good question, and so I don't have the answer for you, uh, but I'll make sure to send it to you in your update this week. I'm curious. So I think we have to follow federal law and recognize how. There's no question. Why wouldn't we? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So the memorandum of agreement is the best way to adjust that. Great. So I will gear that up for the various unions. Would obviously have to accept it, but I can't see why. They, they would take a day off. Absolutely. Thank okay. you. Um, thank you. And this brings us to citizen participation. At this time, anyone attending person would like to address council, please come down. You have two minutes at the podium. Yes, I'd just like to share with you quickly that I that I brought up that I was talking about with the new city manager. And as for the nonsense conference comment, for two years, Brass and Pals insist that I join the ICMA and abide by their ethics. 
great, great organization and a great conference that yielded a great individual to take over as city manager. The mayor and I paid for all our own travel expenses, airfare, hotel, meals. The city paid the conference registration only. The video was entirely the invitation of the ICMA. They should have paid for that video too. This is easily verified by contacting them. The newly hired city manager heard about Augsburg at the ICMA conference while viewing the video. If anybody wants a copy, let me know. Hello again. Uh, when I spoke last year tonight, I was told that uh, basically it was nonsense or it wasn't true about me speaking about uh, being expelled from City Hall by uh, Mike Skelly and Stephen Jelly for two weeks. I said that, I've never. Heard that absolutely me. was true. I spoke to you personally about it, sir. I, I so you did know about it. Don't say you didn't. Uh, don't call me a liar. You're the one who's the liar. I have a compact disc video of, I took out front here. I'm going to. Uh, copy it to as many discs as I can and I'll be here handing them out to everybody. I'll give them to the crowd. I'll give them to you. The unfortunate thing is the people, the people who really did the employees who were being ordered to violate people's rights. If they didn't, they were scared they were going to be fired. That's why this stuff happened. It's not right. It shouldn't have never happened to me. And you sit there and, Oh, we don't know about it. And, and I said earlier, I had a lawyer who was willing a civil suit attorney who could not believe what I told him. He couldn't even believe it. I'm gonna call the police station, I'll call City Hall, and uh, they probably won't even talk to me from what you're saying, this is nuts. And the cops were at my house that night and said, no, Greg can go back to the meetings, he can participate, he can go in City Hall now, and, and this and that. And that was all stemmed from from Stephen Jelly, and you knew about it. He's your, he's your boy, Mike, come on now. And then you sit here and try to say that I'm making this up. I didn't make this up. The man who did it to me sitting right behind me, okay? And it's unfortunate that we got people leading the city asking people to violate other people's rights, their constitutional rights. It could open up doors for major lawsuits. It really can. And I know you don't care about lawsuits. That doesn't bother you. Breaking the law doesn't bother you. Lying doesn't bother you. That's enough. The 15th, you got something coming up for that. So You're all lying. Stop. what we need to do is we need to pass a resolution to get a new mayor for the city of Augensburg who isn't corrupt, who doesn't lie, who doesn't stand by corrupt city managers, who have on, department on, heads stop. not do their job and pick and choose what situations stop. they want to handle and when and how they handle them. You are a disgrace to this city. And Mr. Dillabaugh, I want to thank you for the first time since you've been in office here that I believe for finally doing the right thing. And when Mike was wrong tonight, you told him. I really appreciate that. You very rarely participate. You're very quiet. Your time. You kind of keep your opinions to yourself. Your but I, I really like to see the four. And the second this happened, how long did it take for you, Mike, to start to turn on all your people and blame everything on them instead of you? You and Stephen Jelly are the reason that this city's in the shape it's in. And the cops don't even want to kick me out of here because they're sick of violating my rights for you, sir. Have a good night. It honestly breaks my heart tonight to say what I'm going to say. The most junior counselor here has three years of experience. The mayor has three years of experience. I was hoping that these meetings would be run more professionally, with more dignity and more respect for each other, for the citizens of the city and for your staff. But I don't see that. If you are now, we are now members of the ICMA, if we're still members of NICOM, I strongly urge you to take some of these videos and at least let their board governance committees or advisors look at these meetings and give you advice over how these should be run better, how you should speak up so everyone in the audience can hear you, not just each other, how you should engage with each other and the respect that you should have. You don't have to like each other. You don't have to agree with each other, but you have to ask, you have to act with respect and you have to let everyone have a chance to speak. And sitting here tonight, I know that resolution that was on the table 
But as one of the counselors said, it could have been any one of you any night. And maybe it should be more. Maybe you should shut yourselves as a council. Because I even watched tonight with one of your department heads speaking and giving very good information. And instead, other information was brought forward about something that had nothing to do with that resolution just to silence that person. And that's what it looks like to the public. So I urge you to please take advantage. I would offer to give you governance lessons. I do it for many of the boards throughout the state, but I know that would not be taken well and it wouldn't be appropriate. So with governance, I ask you, please reach out. You do need the help. Thank you very much. Uh, good evening, Mike Tooley, 214 Hamilton Street. Um, since money has been appropriated for the conduct of interviews for city ca uh, manager candidates, I've created this time for, for uh, city council to give the community a gener general update as to where we stand in the city manager's search. For example, how many applications did the city receive? How many candidates received initial interviews? How many candidates remain in the pool for further consideration? And what will the process be going to the selection of a new city manager? And what is the projected timeline? A general update I think would be appreciated. Thank you. Anyone else? Anyone attending remotely? I do not see any hands raised. I will make a motion to adjourn to executive session financial credit or employment history of a particular person or corporation or matters leading to the appointment employment promotion motion discipline suspension uh, dismissal or removal of a particular person I'll second it. Kathy would you please call the roll Councillor Delaba yes Councillor Fisher yes Councillor Kennedy yes. Councillor Reich yes Councillor Scamperly yes Mayor Scully yes Approved. Um, I'm not sure is is we'll be coming back out for uh, or should we dismiss it now? Is anyone? I didn't have a chance. Okay. I don't think we're conducting action early. <clears throat> Possibility. Okay. <clears throat> Let the record reflect. Uh, returning no, from yet. executive yet, session. Mayor. mayor, not yet. No. Okay. Not yet. We have to number ever. Mayor, if I may, I would just like to remind Councillor Fisher that he will need to physically move from the room that he is in and keep his feed live, use a different device to participate in an executive session, sir. Okay. Thank you. Yep.
That's life in big city.
Is uh, Steve back? Councilor Fisher has okay. returned, yes. Yes. What the record reflect that upon returning from executive session, all members of council are still present. I will make a motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Adjourned. <laughs>